Christopher Bell's recent penalty at the Martinsville Speedway created quite a stir among NASCAR. His last lap wall ride, reminiscent of the famous Ross Chastain move in 2022, raised questions about NASCAR's rules and how they're enforced. The situation is interesting, not only because of Bell's penalty, but also because it shows an ongoing debate about what is considered fair play and sportsmanship in NASCAR. In the final moments of the race, Bell, in an attempt to secure a spot at the championship four, made a bold move on the outside wall, a tactic that has been banned by NASCAR after Chastain's famous wall riding maneuver in 2022. Bell's action was seen as a clear rule violation and NASCAR acted swiftly to penalize him. This decision immediately affected the standings, placing William Byron in the final spot instead of Bell. However, the incident didn't end with Bell's penalty it triggered discussions across the racing world about NASCAR's rules, enforcement, and how past incidents set precedents. In response to the incident, NASCAR's senior vice president of competition, Elton Sawyer, explained the reasoning behind the penalty, citing a safety concern that was established after Chastain's wall ride. So if you go back a couple of years ago now when we had the situation with the one car on the last lap and riding the wall, uh, we would met with the industry, we met with the drivers, and, and everyone to a man decided that that was not something that um, you know we could tolerate. We didn't want that move to be accepted. Um, we had language in the rule book. It is a safety violation. And when we saw the 20 car, that's exactly where we went. Um, we looked at it a couple different times just to make sure. And um, you know that was the call. In NASCAR, the 100% rule is designed to prevent drivers from holding back intentionally to alter race results. This rule gained attention in 2013 during an incident known as Spingate, where drivers intentionally spun or slowed down to benefit teammates. The rule itself is somewhat vague, stating that drivers should compete to the best of their ability and avoid actions that could artificially alter the finishing order. However, enforcement has been inconsistent over the years, which has led to a perception that NASCAR's rulings are sometimes unpredictable. The 100% rule came up again in this recent Martinsville race. Late in the event, several drivers were observed making moves that seemed to benefit specific teams or manufacturers. For example, Austin Dillon and Ross Chastain, both Chevrolet drivers, appeared to create a blockade behind William Byron, another Chevrolet driver, which made it easier for Byron to stay ahead of Bell. The radio communications from Dillon's team also hinted at a strategy to help Byron by holding back Chastain suggesting some level of coordination. Ten four, does the one crew chief know the deal? Yeah, he should. Nice and far with the 24 here down there, door. 24 is one to the good, one point to the good. Down there, even, six to wind up with the three. In addition to this, Bubba Wallace, driving for Toyota, reported a sudden flat tire late in the race, which allowed Bell to move up a spot. Some observers questioned the timing, speculating that Wallace's showdown was a strategic move to benefit his teammate, Bell, by allowing him to gain points. Although there's no concrete evidence proving that Wallace intentionally slowed down, the timing did raise eyebrows. NASCAR is currently reviewing the radio data and race footage, but there's uncertainty about whether they will penalize anyone involved. When it comes to deciding penalties for team alliances and race manipulation, NASCAR's history shows mixed results. In a similar situation in 2020, Eric Jones, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing, received a direct radio message instructing him not to pass teammate Denny Hamlin, who was in a tight points battle. Don't pass him, Jones. Despite this clear message, NASCAR chose not to penalize Jones or his team, leaving fans and drivers with the impression that penalties aren't always applied consistently. In Bell's case, the wall riding penalty was swift and decisive while the potential manipulation from other teams during the race remains under scrutiny. Some fans believe that NASCAR's playoff format, which increases the stakes in each race toward the end of the season, may be driving teams to push the boundaries of fair play. The current system places significant pressure on drivers and teams, as every point becomes crucial in determining who advances to the championship four. With such high stakes, the temptation for teams to use strategies that could be considered manipulative grows stronger. The playoffs create a scenario where a driver's fate can hinge on a single point, intensifying the competition 
and potentially leading teams to engage in borderline tactics. Another factor adding to the controversy is the close alliances between manufacturers and NASCAR. It's not uncommon for drivers from the same manufacturer to work together during races, especially at tracks like Daytona and Talladega, where drafting is key. But in a playoff race like Martinsville, where every position matters, these alliances can create situations that some view as unfair. Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota all have vested interest in seeing their drivers succeed, and these alliances sometimes play out on the track in ways that blur the line between teamwork and manipulation. The question of how to address team alliances and manufacturer collaboration is challenging. NASCAR's rules don't explicitly forbid teamwork, and it's difficult to draw a line between natural cooperation and coordinated efforts to influence race results. NASCAR is careful not to stifle the competitive spirit and teamwork that makes the sport exciting, but it also wants to make sure that drivers are racing at their best without outside influences. Balancing these two goals is a delicate task, and NASCAR's decisions can often feel inconsistent as it navigates these complex situations. Some fans argue that NASCAR's approach to enforcing the 100% rule could be improved by clarifying what actions are penalizable. The current rule, while well-intentioned, is written in a way that leaves room for interpretation, which can lead to confusion and accusations of favoritism. By defining specific behaviors that constitute a breach of the 100% rule, NASCAR could potentially avoid some of the controversies that have arisen in recent years. For example, explicitly outlining penalties for blocking or slowing down to help a teammate could give teams and fans a better understanding of what's considered acceptable. The role of radio communications also plays into this issue. In recent years, NASCAR has increased its use of radio communication data to identify potential rule violations. Team radios provide valuable insights into driver strategies and decisions, and NASCAR can use this data to assess whether drivers are intentionally manipulating race outcomes. But radio communications can sometimes be ambiguous, as seen in this case with Dylan's team. While some messages seem to imply a strategy to hold back, it's challenging to determine intent from a few snippets of radio chatter. Many fans feel that NASCAR should either enforce the 100% rule more consistently or consider reversing it altogether. NASCAR's leniency in some cases, such as Eric Jones in 2020, contrasts sharply with its strict stance on other rules like the wall riding ban. This inconsistency has led to frustration among drivers and fans who feel that the rules should be applied uniformly. By establishing a clear and consistent approach to the 100% rule, NASCAR could reduce the potential for controversy and ensure a fair playing field for all competitors. Now, before you leave, just don't forget to comment down your thoughts on this. And if you enjoyed this video so far, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos.